Welcome to our module on closing entries. This is where we'll learn how to get ready for the next accounting period. We're going to start this module with a little review. We know from the periodicity assumption that every accounting period has a beginning and an end. During the accounting period, economic events occur. We record these economic events in the journal and then post them to the ledger. At the end of the accounting period, we want to prepare financial statements, but before we can do that, we need to do a few things. First, we need to prepare the unadjusted trial balance, then the adjusting entries, then the adjusted trial balance, and then finally we can prepare our financial statements. After we prepare our financial statements, we've accomplished our mission for this accounting period, but the end of the accounting period becomes the beginning of the next accounting period. Before we can start that next accounting period, there are two more things that we need to do. First, we need to prepare closing entries, and then we need to prepare a post-closing trial balance. Both of these steps cause people that study account a little bit of frustration, but after this module, it should be no problem. Again, what we're doing is we're getting ready to start the next accounting period where we're going to be recording economic events in the journal and posting them in the ledger. So a few things that you need to know about closing entries. First, closing entries are done after the financial statements are prepared. The purpose is to reset temporary accounts to zero and get ready for a new accounting period. The temporary accounts are revenues and gains, expenses and losses, dividends, and the income summary account. For the sports fans out there, you can think of this as after the game, you want to reset the scoreboard to zero. Closing entries are done by closing the revenue, gain, expense, and loss accounts to the income summary account and after we do this, the balance in the income summary account will be equal to the net income or loss. If there's a credit balance in the income summary account, we will have net income. If there's a debit balance in the income summary account, we'll have a net loss. Next, we close the income summary and dividend accounts to retain earnings. And that will wrap up the closing entries that are required. So for example, the accounts that are involved are revenue, expense, dividends, income summary, and retained earnings. You may have multiple revenue accounts and multiple expense accounts, but they'll all work the same way. That's why only one revenue and one expense account are included in the example. The dividend account represents the dividends that have been declared during the accounting period, and the income summary account is new. We haven't used the income summary account before. It will have a zero balance when we start, and it will have a zero balance when we end. The retained earnings account is an equity account that we've studied in a previous module, and the balance in the retained earnings account at the start of the closing process is the ending balance from the previous period. Retained earnings is only used during the closing entry process. So again, revenues, expenses, get closed to income summary, dividends and income summary get closed to retained earnings. Let's see how this works. The first step in the process is to close revenue and expense accounts to income summary. The revenue account has a $125,000 credit balance. The expense account has a $75,000 debit balance. Before we begin, we can observe that our net income, revenues minus expenses, will be equal to $50,000. So let's keep in mind net income for this example is $50,000. We want both the revenue and expense accounts to be equal to zero at the end of the closing process. To make revenues be equal to zero, you need a debit of $125,000. If we have a debit of $125,000, we need a credit of $125,000, so the income summary account will be credited for $125,000. 
If we want the expense account to have a zero balance, we'll need a credit of $75,000. If we have a credit, we'll need a debit, so we'll debit the income summary account $75,000. So $125 credit minus $75,000 debit is the $50,000, which is what we said net income was equal to. Remember, if the income summary has a credit balance, that means that revenues are greater than expenses and there is a net income equal to that credit balance. However, if expenses had exceeded revenues, income summary would have a debit balance, which would indicate a net loss. To summarize, in our journal, we will debit revenues 125 and credit income summary 125. Then we will debit the income summary 75 and credit expenses 75. The result of this will be a zero balance in revenue and expense accounts and a credit balance of $50,000 in income summary. The next step in the process is to close the dividend account and the income summary account to retain earnings. Keep in mind this dividend account represents the dividends that were declared during the period. It has a debit balance of $10,000 and income summary account has a credit balance of $50,000. That's the balance that we just created in our previous two closing entries. We want our dividend account to have a zero balance and our income summary account to have a zero balance. Remember we close dividends and income summary to retain earnings. Retain earnings currently has an $80,000 credit balance which is last period's ending balance. To close dividends, we need a credit of $10,000, which means we'll debit retained earnings $10,000. To close income summary, we need a debit of $10,000, which means we will credit retained earnings $50,000. If we take a careful look at this, we can see that beginning retained earnings balance of $80,000 minus dividends plus net income is equal to the ending retained earnings balance of $120,000. If you think back to the module that covered the statement of retained earnings, beginning balance plus net income minus dividends is equal to the ending retained earnings balance. So. After completing this accounting period, we have closed the revenue and expense accounts to income summary and income summary to retain earnings. This puts all of our revenue and expense accounts into retain earnings. We've also closed the dividend account to retain earnings, which reduces retain earnings by the amount of dividends paid during the accounting period. So the Ending retained earnings balance is $120,000 and that balance will not change until we make the closing entries for the next accounting period. To summarize, the closing entries that we made during this slide are to debit retain earnings and credit dividends for $10,000, debit income summary and credit retain earnings for $50,000. The last step in the process is to prepare a post-closing trial balance. If you notice on the post-closing trial balance, you see our asset accounts, cash, inventory and equipment, we see our liability, notes payable, our common stock, and also retain earnings. The retain earnings balance on the post-closing trial balance is equal to the retain earnings after we made our closing entry. We don't see any revenue or expense accounts on the post-closing trial balance because we've closed those accounts out to get ready for the next accounting period. We don't close out our asset liability or equity accounts because those things continue from one accounting period to the next. Just think about it. If you go to bed on December 31st with $75,000 
in cash in the bank. When you wake up in, on January 1st, you still have that cash. Similarly, if you owe someone $15,000, you still owe them the next morning. However, the revenue that you earn in that new accounting period will start over. So in review, we want to look at the accounting cycle one more time. We analyze economic events first, record in the journal, post to the ledger, and then prepare an unadjusted trial balance. What you want to keep in mind is analyzing, recording, and posting happens throughout the accounting period. At the end of the accounting period, when you're ready to make financial statements, the first step in that process is to prepare the unadjusted trial balance. If any of these steps are not comfortable to you, you may want to go back and take a look at previous modules. The next thing you do is prepare adjusting entries and then prepare an adjusted trial balance. Adjusting entries are extremely important for the study of accounting and if this is not completely comfortable to you, you want to go back and review the modules from Unit 4. After you complete your adjusting entries and your adjusted trial balance, then you can prepare the financial statements. After the financial statements are prepared, the last two steps in the process are to get ready for the next accounting period. We prepare the closing entries and the post-closing trial balance. The closing entries include closing revenue, gain, expense, and loss accounts to income summary, closing the income summary and dividend accounts to retain earnings. The balance in income summary prior to closing will equal net income. The ending balance in retained earnings is reported on the balance sheet and it will not change until you do your closing entries for the next accounting period. So this period's ending retained earnings balance will be equal to next period's beginning retained earnings balance. The following do not appear on the post-closing trial balance. Revenues and gains, expenses and losses, dividends, and income summary. These are all considered temporary accounts and get closed out at the end of each accounting period.